Welcome to the Highly Anticipated Podcast. I'm your host, Josh Raphael. I got my co host, Tyler Pouncey and Will Young. Like, what's going on? But first, before I even say anything, if you're watching this right now, stop what you're doing and subscribe. Like, stop whatever you're doing. You're eating some chips. Why would you not subscribe? TV. Subscribe, like what's why would, you be doing, doing, bro? Bro. why would you be even on here and not subscribe? Come on, man. Bro, you you gotta subscribe. Bro. Like, come on, man. You got to. Okay. Okay. But let's like, get back to it. You wouldn't subscribe <laughs> at this point in time. It's like, bro, like it's crazy. crazy. But now nah, we we back into it. We do appreciate all the support and love, man. I mean, you guys have been killing on IG and all that so we appreciate yeah, plus 200 it. followers is lit it's up yeah for sure for sure so just hit us with a little subscribe on youtube yeah, and let's get this going but um yeah let's get this started we got gosh we actually got a lot to talk about i mean a lot um phoenix suns made a great move got bradley beal we got the nba draft tomorrow we got a very interesting start bench cut and a bunch more to go but first, we have to start with this Phoenix Suns trade. Bradley Beal is a Phoenix Sun. We thought that man was going to go to Miami, whoever else. But this man is a Phoenix Sun. I really don't think anyone saw that coming. Uh, but I'm going to start with the biggest Phoenix Sun fan on this podcast right now, my boy Ty. Yes, sir. I mean... Talk to me. How, how you feel about this trade, man? Does that do you think that puts you guys as one of the favorites for next year? Uh, I was iffy about it, honestly, because when the reports came out that we were like trying to trade for him, I was like, that's not gonna happen. Because I didn't, I just didn't see we as good in the month that we were just gonna focus on, you know, adding to the team. But when I seen it, I'm like, okay, and what we gave up for it is cool. And everybody's saying, you ain't got no depth. Well, we ain't had no depth with. CP. So at least we got a better player in Bradley Bill. So I'm assuming they go add like add some people, hopefully trade DeAndre Aiden for more pieces. I don't know how really much you can get for him after this past playoff, but you gotta get something. You don't really need DeAndre Aiden. He needs the ball to like be good. And there's only one ball on the court and we got three of the best top fifteen scores in the league right now. So it's just it's if we're gonna see how it works. Thankfully we got Frank Vogel too who's a very defensive-minded coach, so hopefully they're locking on the defensive end. But we just got to make some – I'll give it – for the Sun side, I'll give it a C-plus. You get it's, – it's pros and cons to it, but I'll give it a C-plus, B-minus, maybe. We just got to see how it works. And how about you, Will? No, you got a lot to say on this. Um, honestly, I, I don't know how I feel about it. Um, I – I already thought the Suns were not necessarily favorites, but probably one of the favorites to win going into next year, um, being that they gave the Nuggets the most games. Um, but I don't know how I feel about the addition of Bradley Bill, to be honest. Like like Tyler says, another ball-dominant guard. I don't know. I think if they don't – if Bradley Bill can stick – to a role of just being like a shooter, then I think I would give this trade. Eh, I give it a B minus, maybe B plus. If Bradley Bill's coming in thinking it's gonna be, which I don't think he is, obviously because you're with D Book and Kevin Durant. But if they can't find a way um, to make all these ball dominant guards work together, then this trade is gonna flop real fast. And it's going to be a bad situation all over again. So I don't really have too high expectations. So for those out there trying to hate on, you know, the Suns or maybe KD talking about some of y'all should win it all now. Like, don't do not do that. Don't do that. It's not high expectations yet. We'll see what they can put together. Like you said, Tyler, Frank Vogel is a defensive-minded coach. So if you can get these boys to lock in. But to do that, it don't matter how defensive-minded you are. If you don't have no defensive players, it ain't gonna work. It don't matter. It's not gonna. You're not That's gonna true. turn. You're not even gonna turn Bradley, KD, or D Book into first team all defense. That ain't gonna happen. So right. unless we get some more defensive pieces, it won't matter how defensive minded he is. It's just not gonna work. But it could though. 
Did, do that make them the favorites just because they got Bradley? Absolutely not. I think regardless, they were still going to be one of the favorites to go to. Um, I agree with kind of both of your points. I just want to kind of point something out. Um, and I grant granted you probably see it this way, but you said it's not high expectations. I think it's opposite of that. I think the oh, expectations yeah, are high. Yeah. When you yeah, have Kevin Durant, Devin that. Booker, and Bradley Bill on one team, the expectations are high. Now, I agree with what you both of you said. I mean, especially going back to Tyler's point, I believe they should probably trade A and then see what they can get and get some pieces to complement both those both. Well, all three of them, D Book, Bradley, and KD. Um, I believe they can get a, a solid bench. Not saying you need to go nine, ten deep, but give me two, three guys that can come in and contribute and play their roles. Those guys are gonna be able to make some noise in the playoffs for sure. I mean, you have Devin Booker and Kevin Durant that took the Nuggets to six games, which no other team in the playoffs could do. So clearly that team is ready to go. But um I don't think so. I don't think it's I don't think it's high but I think what people this is what I'm saying. I don't want people to make it high expectations, but I think people are going to put high expectations because they want it not to work out. I really think so. Because there's But like no, in what world is Kevin Durant, Bradley Beal, Devin listen, Booker on the same team not on, high on, expectations? On paper it would be like, oh, we should have high expectations for them. But when you really think about it like you said, it's three ball dominant guards and we've seen what happened when there's a number of stars that are the same person, just different. Like we've seen what So happened. what are you saying the sun ceiling is then? Their ceiling. Because to me, you're like, saying like there's their ceiling no, 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 isn't no, no, very no. high. I'm not I'm not what saying I mean. that's still I'm saying I'm saying regardless, this was my take, regardless of whether Bradley Beal came there or not, the Suns were always gonna be one of the favorites to win the NBA championship. Probably. So that means before he got there, then they already had expectations. Bradley, go, Bradley going there doesn't make them overwhelming favorites or really up there. Uh, no, it increases their chances, but not as significantly as I think people think. But I'm, I'm asking how this is going to work out. I'm asking. Going into next year, if you never made the Bradley Bill trade, would, did the, would you say the Phoenix Suns had high expectations going into next year. Yeah. 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 I just don't think so they're what, higher with Bradley Bill. But that but there's still like that, like high that expectations, much though. There is. In that okay, locker if room, you just say, be... if you just say, but I thought, but it seems like you're saying the Suns have high expectations because of Bradley Bill. The Suns have high I mean, he adds to it, though. He adds to it. I yeah, mean, you replace I Landry Shaman. You think, you're, you think you replace Landry Shaman. Think about this. Amount. Okay, I mean, what? If you want to add like 5%, 10%, but it's still high expectations regardless. You replace Landry Shamit, who was, according to you guys, was piss poor in the playoffs. And then you replace Chris Paul, who was always hurt in the playoffs and had a fat contract with Bradley Beal. Yeah, I mean, we like. Have, we don't have no guard and no no defense. And, but I'm saying like your team is the same essentially. You just, I mean, you you took out Shamit. I mean, and Chris Paul. Would you not say you got better? The defensive, the defensive, better. the defensive issues. You guys already had to address that already. But I'm saying like you replaced Landry Shamit and Chris Paul with Bradley Beal. Would you not yeah, say better. you got better? But 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 so the expectations rise. Essentially, there a little bit though. His finals are his finals bit. are best if we really being real. You should not have three all stars. Essentially, and you don't and you don't win no finals. Like we ain't seen at least, at least though, in a whole year though, right? Hmm? It's Bradley Bill. It's Bradley. Bill. I, we can say it's Bradley Bill. We can. I he averaged twenty three on fifty percent shooting. Listen, I understand that. Hmm? I mean, look, that's still a thirty point per game score. No, I a hundred a hundred percent. I'm just saying we haven't we haven't seen him play. No, and I mean, he's still going to go in there. He's going to – yeah, he's he can put the ball in the basket. I mean, but going back to Will's point, um, yeah, I believe for them to really be successful, one, Devin Booker is going to have to become a way better playmaker. He's a good one now, but he's going to have to become a way better playmaker. Bradley Beal is going to have oh, to be if, able to just – If D-Book's the one, I'm telling you right now, the Suns will not – you're crazy. We won't go. Bro, to the final. I, but crazy. that's, but listen. No, 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 no. Tyler, the being bro, the one, I, 
He's I been, believe, he was the one I when they think were trash. He I was think the one I in the play. Being the one in the playoffs is completely different from being Josh, the one. I understand. What about game hold up, season? Hold up, hold up, Josh. Did I? Not, what was his first game when Chris Paul Western Conference Finals? Tell me, do you remember his stats, Will? My God, this is what I'm forty saying. ten and ten. I understand as he was that. playing the one. I understand that, but being yeah. the one for a couple games in the playoffs is completely different than being the yeah, one. Yeah, but he's gonna have eighty two games to get ready for that. You compared think to like used playoffs. to it by the time the playoffs hit, if they don't, I think, know, I, think, I get your point. I, I think get your point. I think he'll be burnt. I think he'll be burnt out by having to initiate offense for eighty-two games. No, and I then having I, to make a run in the playoffs. I don't I think get, I, that's me personally. And having the load of having to score, that's you won't just, have to score. He won't Bradley have the Bill load as much. Man. He won't have the load as much because he's gonna have Bradley Bill and Kevin Durant to fall back it's on. Still I mean, a I heavy get, load. If you don't have no I'm defense, I'm not denying that. I'm not denying that. If you still have a heavy defense. You still need it's the same load. If you're not gonna play no defense, you need to score the same. Yes, regardless. I'm not deny I am not denying that, but that's why you guys have to address some defensive issues. That's literally what why you're gonna have to address that. You guys address your defensive issues. Devin Booker will be fine at the one oh, because he's no. gonna have to become a better playmaker. Mm, I Honestly, agree. I think we that, need a, we need I think that makes guard. you I think that makes you guys scarier, to be honest. I think if Devin Booker becomes a better playmaker, that makes the sun scarier. I'm going to be honest with you. And that'll elevate his game. Because we talked about this before. I remember I was saying how Devin Booker is like, you know, he's just score first. And that's why I think I didn't want to put him as a superstar because I don't think he does anything else really good. But if he can become a really good playmaker with Kevin Durant and literally Bradley Beal and I have to score as much, he could be scary, but I get your point, though. I understand. I mean, that's not really his game, so it's really uh, hard to if, see Devin if Booker if as a playmaker. If to one, our ceiling goes down. That's just my personal opinion. Our ceiling goes down. <laughs> I'd rather, I'd rather have, I'd rather have KD trying it out at the one than I would. Hell do. no. Ne no next like, topic. Hey, 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 hey. Next topic. No bias, guys, come but y'all are tweaking if you think that Nate, people come on. will be better at the one than KD, bro. Katie's already a bit, he's already a proven better playmaker than Debo. Proven consistently. Let's not let's not go back. Let's not go exactly. in circles exactly. with this. We going on top I don't. Of I, I, my, I just like. We going on top. We going on top. Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's, stay on, let's stay on. 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 We're not. We're not. We're not gonna go there. Oh, old us. Old us would have gotten an argument about that, but we not. Let's let's, let's, let's get into. I thought that was my fault. I thought that was like a loop. Let's get into it. Um. But yeah, just final point. I mean, do I think they um their contenders would be? Um, I don't think so just yet because of the fact of they need a lot more pieces to make. Do I think they're scary? Yeah, I think they're very much scary. You know, um, granted, you look at the you look Harden, Kyrie, and obviously KD, but thinking about it, they were always hurt. Honestly, when they all played together, that team was was nuts, and they're three ball dominant players. But um, kind of moving on, another big news in the nba world this time in the free agency draymond green um surprised me opted out of his 27 million dollar contract yeah um so starting with you will i mean where do you think draymond goes <sighs> where do i think draymond goes or where do i want him to go um, i said where do you think he's going <laughs> where you wanted um, him to go you know draymond, you to i personally you're gonna hate me for this but if well, it depends. It really depends ultimately on how Draymond or how much Draymond wants to get paid. Um, mm -hmm. I I feel like he's expecting like max type money, and I don't think if he goes, I think he's a fantastic player. I think he knows everybody knows how much value he brings, but even then, I think his value to the team is underrated, highly underrated. Um, so he's he's undervalued in that respect. But do I think away from the Warriors, he deserves max type money? Mm -mm. Maybe close a little bit, but max type money? Nah, I don't think so. Um, and so I, I honestly could see him going to the Suns. And I, you know, that's crazy. If we have enough, if the Suns, if the Suns have more money. I, Josh hates to see because he don't want to hear the Suns get anybody else. I understand. Which I understand. I get it. Um, really. I'll say, I'll say, I'll say the Suns or 
the Lakers. I really do. I say the Suns or the Lakers. Right. Look, now he put his head down because he's like, he's like oh, hey, Lakers. that's just more realistic, though. Like, I think, well, I say I would say both because he's both feeling a need that they have. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, for a need for sure. Like, I think he needs it, but I feel like it's more there's a lot more personal mass on that team. I, that's the reason why I don't think he would join that team. I don't because of the fact that Kevin Durant is there. I know, I, don't I, know, think he would I, know I know what you're saying, but I don't think personally, just from watching like podcasts and different things like regarding that whole situation, I don't think the beef between the beef quotation, the beef between KD and Draymond is as prevalent as everybody's making it out the scene, at least anymore. Like at that time, like, yeah, it was some crazy stuff said, da 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 da. But I think they squashed that, and I think they would squash that. To both be competitive and compete for a championship. Um, but I do think that Draymond, I mean, I ain't never seen nobody outside of you, Josh, glaze Brown as much than Draymond has. So I I would probably say if I had to put my money on it, I'd say he'd probably go to the Lakers. Um, obviously they could use some more defense and they could use just an engine, like an engine of the team. Um, obviously, Bron is going into year six. Was it seventy three or seventy four? Um, but yeah, I think you're seventy four and still balling like he's twenty five. Right, 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 right. I mean, go right, crazy, right? Might go crazy. I'm at, I mean, the more years you add, the better. Thanks, better, better, better right? Better yeah, now. just like his wine, right? Just like his wine, get fine, yeah. like fine, like fine wine. Um, yeah, better with time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I would probably say the Suns or or the uh, or the Lakers. What about you, Ty? Uh, he said the Lakers already. I I think he'll go. To, he might go there too. But I think he should go to the Mavs because he got a way to get some money. They need. They need mm, some defense. That's true. They do. I feel like that's the if he if he don't want because I don't know what he think he deserves like money wise. I personally don't think it's anything over twenty mil, but he might get thirty from some of these teams, aka the. the I can see him going to the Pistons too. If he really being realistic, like that's why I want him to go. Home. That's why I want him to go. That's why I want him to go. He, go. He, from, he, he won a champion. He, he, I don't he know. He got the go. patience. I don't know. He got the patience yeah, for that. That's another bro. thing. They're not. Gonna, it depends. Right. That's what I'm saying. It depends on if he care about winning. Because I mean, he got four titles. So I mean, he could just go say, "Well, I just won yeah. my last big." I just think I just the way he is. Big contract. Yeah. Yeah. True. He not trying to go back into the Pistons to give him the bag. Yeah, I was about to say the Pistons got some bread for him. So I mean, Effects. I think in order it should be the Mavs, Lakers, and then the Pistons. Maybe I don't see him coming to Phoenix. I don't even know why you said that. We don't got. We can't even. He not taking no vet minimum, and that's all we got for him. And if he ain't taking that, he ain't going. We'd have to get rid. We had to ship some more people off for sure. Um, Ooh, like it ain't nobody else. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think isn't it just like your start five was the only ones under contract? We got it's Bird, KD, Aiden, Bill, and Cam. They Payton. make up damn near 75 seventy five percent of the the salary. <laughs> Too much bread. That's why I'm like Aiden got. That's why I'm like Aiden got to go. Yeah. Um. But no, nah, I like the Mavs one. That was, that was that's an interesting one because the fact they do have money, and if Kyrie does end up coming back. You know, he kind of gives them that defensive edge that they do need to really get over the top. Um, I think it goes back to Golden State on just a smaller deal. Um, I think maybe just maybe might just open up some more money because they might want to make a little more moves. And I mean, you know, he loves playing with Steph and Clay. So, I mean, he's probably just probably just taking a little pay cut just to kind of help them make more moves. Um but I'm not mad at the Lakers one. I could see him going to the Lakers. That's been a team that, I mean, what's his name? Rich Paul's his agent, ain't it? So, I mean, wouldn't be surprised if he went to L.A. But don't think he'll, he's going to the Suns. I don't think that's even an option, only because of the point that Tyler just made. I mean, it just you guys just yeah, don't have yeah, the money. Yeah. Um, I mean, if you had the money, then maybe we could be having a conversation. But I do not see Draymond Green taking a vet minimum. I just don't see him right. doing that right it, now. It, it um, oh, no, he has not It's not like it's not like he's on a crazy decline. Like he's still hooping and still one of the best defensive forwards in the league. So like, like I wouldn't like I don't see why he would take a vet minimum when he could get twenty plus somewhere else. That would just be dumb on his part. And I don't even think Rich Paul will let him do that. So, I mean, yeah, um, think either the Mavs, Lakers, 
or he's just going back to go and stand a smaller deal, you know, helping them get more pieces. Um, I can see that. I mean, they got like a they, they really got a small window, I think, because they're still those. a champ. As long as Steph's in his prime, they're still a champion. Yeah, but I, but I think they got I think they got one small, uh, super small window with those three. Like one more go this year. If he goes back, yeah, yeah I think they will have one more go this year. To yeah, maybe get there, and then if right. not, it wraps. Yeah, but they got to make some moves for sure. They got they're too little. They really got to make some more moves. Um, but kind of. So we were talking about Bradley Bill a little bit before. And obviously, he's on the Suns and the Miami Heat were one of the teams that, you know, were pushing for him hard. But there was a report that came out that basically was saying that, like, I mean, essentially, we knew that Bill wanted to go to Miami. That's where he thought he was going. But essentially, it came out that Miami didn't put all their marbles, didn't send out who they really wanted to send out because they were weighing out for Dame. Now... Mm -hmm. Reports are coming out that mm -hmm. Dame doesn't even want to leave. Nope, and it's really been mind-boggling to me watching this all unfold because I'm like, man, did I miss a rumor or a report where Dame said I want to be traded? Because I was just so confused as to why Miami was pushing so hard for Dame. And then literally, like, I just seen an another rumor or another um report that just came out right before we hopped on that, the Portland Trailblazers shut down all trade talks. They said, we don't even, we're not even I taking was like, calls. Did we'll Miami drop it. the ball on this one? Because not saying, because ideally Miami could have put the best package together for Bradley Beal over the Suns. I mean, Max. so it's like, did Miami drop the ball? I'm going to start with you, Ty. Yeah, you could say it, but you got to look at it like this. Who would you rather have, Bill or Damian Lillard? Like, Let's keep it a buck. We are we all three of us and everybody on the, on the planet would pick uh, Dame. So I mean, I get why they was trying to wait. Damn, he didn't get either one of them, and you can't. And who else they really gonna trade for? We being real, like yeah. it ain't really no star that'll help them. Because I mean, honestly, if you really think about it, they got to the fun. They got to the the finals with just that team. If you just add another decent player, you don't really need another superstar for real. We know, yeah. we know who going who gonna hoop on that team. So. I kind of get them, but then again, I'm like, damn, you didn't get either one of them. So I wouldn't say drop the ball, but I get, I think Pat Riley's more like, well, we made it to the finals with them, and we played the best team in the league by far. So, like, I don't think they did. You get, but I wouldn't be mad if you said they they uh, if they didn't though, because it's like you you should have got Dane though. You, but who is they gonna give up for Dane? Were they asking for Tyler Hero? Probably. I just don't think. Yeah, I just don't I think. See. I don't think the Trailblazers were going to trade Dame unless Dame came out and said, I want to be traded. Dame so it's like, he never Dame. said he wanted to be traded. The Miami Heat were just hoping that, I mean, that, hey, maybe, you know, Dame wants to get out. But um, what do you think about that, Will? Um, do I think they dropped the ball. I think, I think, I think, Pat, well, obviously, they, you can't say they dropped the ball, like you said, unless Dame. Um, says he wanted to be traded. It wouldn't matter what they offer. If at the end of the day, Dame doesn't want to be traded, he don't want to be traded. Um, do I think that the Heat put up as much of a fight to get Dame as they should have? Probably not. So that's where you can say they dropped the ball. Um, and I think it's going to come back to bite them. I think this is the first. I'm not even in the camera. My fault. Uh, okay. <laughs> Uh, I think it's going to come back to bite him. And I think this will be the first, one of the first times where his kind of stance on like culture versus talent comes back to bite him. Um, like as far as the Heat organization, for the most part, they've been a team like Pat Riley is a culture dude. Like he ain't into all the hype of getting like super, superstars. What well, besides like when they had um, like obviously like, Ron, D Wade, Bosch, like making super teams in terms of that. Um, besides that, he's into like pieces and having culture fits. Mm -hmm. And I think in years past, for example, this year, we like ain't no way the heat finna do ain't no way the heat finna be on none of that. Yeah. And they proved they proved all of us wrong. Um, because they had whatever, how many so guys just locked in that played hard, that competed, and they ended up, you know, shocking the world in that respect. But in that same regard, you get to the finals, and at the end of the day, as much as culture is conducive to winning, 
talent's gonna win every single time if you have more talent. Yeah. Um, and I think, I think Pat Wiley probably didn't go so hard because he's like probably debating between a culture fit, like obviously bringing Dame on would be great, but we have such a great culture with it. And Jimmy probably tell him, "Hey, we gonna run it, we gonna run it back again uh, next year." Which unfortunately, that's just not happening. That bitch, I mean, that bitch, <laughs> the bitch shot was this year, um, and they ain't got Dame, and they didn't get Bill. So, you know, it was a good run, Jimmy. Congrats, but he probably not. It's probably it's probably wraps for, for the Heat for the near future. Um, so yeah, I, I would say I would say they dropped the ball a little bit, but then again, we never know. You know, he might prove us wrong again. They might. They just might. I can't. I don't know. Nah, I feel that. Um, I'm got a 50-50 on the drop the ball. Um, Because when I say drop the ball, I'm thinking more of like, I feel like in this league, you got to be aggressive, especially when it comes to trades and, yeah. you know, like getting the right players on your team. Um, Knowing that Bradley Beal can almost choose anywhere that he wants to go and knowing that he is – more than likely going to get traded and knowing that you could get him and pair him with Jimmy. Because looking at the Heat, to Will's point, man, they prove us wrong every single year. I mean, making it back to the finals, the Eastern Conference Finals, they're dogs. That is a great team. But the, but the bottom line is they haven't been able to get over the hump. And the reason they haven't been able to get over the hump, to Will's point again, is as much of the culture you got and as good as a team as you got, talent always wins in this league. That's just the end of the story. It is. More nine out of ten times. And the beautiful thing about basketball, it's a seven-game series. The best team. It's not like football where, like, sometimes, you know, something may just happen. You only have one game. So it's like, you know, sometimes a team that's not better wins. Basketball. The better team wins more time than not in the playoffs. And the Miami Heat got to the finals in 2020, got to the Eastern Conference finals last year, got to the finals this year, and lost all three times because they don't have that extra player to push them over the edge. I mean, you look at the Nuggets, bro. They got uh, like one through four, one through five buckets. You know what I mean? And even though you want to take away Aaron Gordon, take away KCP, you got a two-headed dragon in Jokic and Jamal Murray. Don't get me wrong. Bam has been – he's been hooping. But I think they need another guard, you know, another guard that would really help them. And Bradley Beal would have been that for them. Um, I just think they should just went all in on him. Um, If Dame had came out and said, I want to be traded, damn, it sucks. But you got Bradley Beal and you still got your culture because yeah. they probably weren't going to get rid of. I mean, they seem to be holding Tyler Hero and Bam wasn't going to get traded. So whatever. Trade everyone else. We don't care. As long as it's not Jimmy Bam or Tyler Hero, you don't care. You get Bradley Beal back and you still keep that culture. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I mean, I get it, though. Like, it's Damian Lillard. I mean, if I want to pick Damian Lillard or Bradley Beal, I'm picking Damian Lillard today, tomorrow, next year. I'm picking him. But... Unless you got some inside person telling you that Damian Lillard wants to be traded, man, you need to go trade for Bradley Beal. Because now, I mean, out of all the teams he could have went to, you let him go to the Suns. So granted, that. they not in your conference, so you probably ain't going to even worry about them till the yeah. finals. But it's like, look what you done did now. Now Bradley <laughs> Beal with the Suns. That man could have went anywhere else. He could have been with y'all. Y'all let him go to the Suns that already got well, Devin Booker. Kyle Lowry, Duncan Robinson. Come on, bro. Y'all could have traded all. Y'all could have just. Because the thing is, crazy. the culture, right? I get the culture, but you want rings. Do you not? You keep right. making it back and losing. Rings. So what What? What's? What? What they say, Albert Einstein said, what he said, when you keep doing something over and over again and expecting a different result, it's insanity. It's insanity. So you all keep right, making man. it back and back and back. You will look not LeBron. win with these undrafted look, players. Look at LeBron. <laughs> LeBron, from whenever he came in, that man was he was the one seed with the Cavs and was went and got swept by the Spurs. That man went and played the the big three Celtics, played uh, Detroit when they was nice. That boy kept getting busted over and over and over again. That man said, "You know what? 
<laughs> finna go make a super team and got himself let's two rings. Some more talent. And, and so, yeah. but that's just that's just how I get it. Some people, you know what I mean? I get it. Like, but bro, in this league, like you need. I'm sorry, like you're gonna need another person to help you get over the top. Mm-hmm. Like, end the story. That's just that. Unless you averaging 50, 10, and 10, and you want some crazy, like, bro, you got to be on some, the better than LeBron and Jordan combined. Like, we got to see, you got to be some nut stuff to be carrying a team to a ring. But you're not doing that now. So, I don't know how much this culture thing he going, you know, I, I mean, I respect Pat Wright. He's a great GM. Um, He's great everything. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, the man has rings for days. But you're going to need someone else to get you over the top, man. That's just that's just that. Obviously, um, that's the blueprint. Obviously, everybody needs a star. Yeah, every you won't win unless you got just like two stars on your team. It's just not just a happen. fact. Sorry. It's just a fact, man. But um, kind of going away from now, the news and all that, you know, with the trades and Draymond Bill, you know, tomorrow the draft tomorrow, ain't it? Yeah. So I've been seeing. I mean, we already know who going number one. It ain't, it ain't even a question. Like, I mean, they they saying he's the next generational player, you know, and he is tough. Um, but yeah, do you, do you think he lives up? Like, do you think he lives up to the hype? Start with you, Will. Um, uh, honestly, it's really hard to tell. Um, because people, there was I forgot who said it or something, but they were saying that like, if he if he's the next Kevin Durant. Then he was basically a failure, which is kind of like that was Chris Broussard who said that, bro. I think it was Chris which Broussard. Which is literally which that's the most crazy. insane comment I've yeah, ever he heard that. in my entire life. <laughs> ever, like ever. What type of I don't know what type of expectations <clears throat> those are. Um I don't know, man. I don't I really don't I really don't think he'll live up to the hype, to be honest. And by that, I'm not mm. saying that he won't be a great player. But the hype around him right now is that he will be literally the greatest, best. Like, we're going to look back in however so years, and we're going to look back at him the same way everybody looks at Michael Jordan now. We're going to be like, this is the greatest thing that's ever walked the face of the earth. He's incredible. Oh, my gosh, the greatest, best. Like, people going to be worshiping him, da 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 He's going to have his own documentary and shoes and lines and all this stuff. I just I, – I don't – I don't see if we if we're putting him on that type of level pedestal, I don't know. It's hard to say if I like concrete, like I think he won't get there, but I don't know if I don't know if he'll get that. Not not to the hype that they're making it out to be. Like I said, do I think he'll be like <clears throat> a great player? I think we'll look back and be like, yeah, this kid's incredible. I mean he's seven five, but uh, I don't know. To the hype, it is tough. Um, I'm gonna let you. Talk. I just want like kind of address some real quick. Um, like you said, you know they like they compare him to be like the greatest player of all time. But and I get it. You know, a lot of people look at MJ as the greatest player of all time. But MJ, what he, what Victor is facing is most similar to what LeBron faced. If we're being real, MJ didn't face this type of hype coming out of high or college. He didn't. In no, terms of somebody, somebody yeah. coming out of high school, somebody like, and I to Chris Broussard's point, now I'm thinking about it. It was crazy. I didn't think that's a crazy thing to say that if your career comes out like Kevin Durant is a fit, that's a crazy thing that's to say. Wild. That's insane. but I think the point he was trying to make was like, like you just said too, Will. If you're being basically compared to the greatest players of all time. Like they're basically saying like, you're going to be the greatest next thing. Like, I think they're like looking like, okay, you have to have a MJ type career. You have to have a LeBron type career, a Wilt type career. Mm -hmm. Like those are the type of careers that they're saying he needs to have, or it's a failure. Do I think he's going to have those type of careers? Probably not. I mean, I that's just my opinion. I don't think he's going to be better than MJ, Braun, but I do think he's going to be one of the better players in this league. Um, Just because of his, his – he's 7'5", moving like a guard, can shoot from 40. I mean, like, you just don't see that, you know. I do hope he bulks up, you know, uh, preferably. If he could bulk up like Giannis, that man might be unstoppable. He said he did. He literally just said in an interview he don't want to. 
He said, yeah, uh, well, uh, he, he going to need to. He said, people, he going to need to. He going to need to. I don't care what what he say, he going to need to. Uh, he going to need to play some, some he way. Gonna gain weight. He going to gain weight regardless because you, yeah. you're playing in the NBA, bro. You don't have to, you don't have to go crazy. So, like, but the crazy thing is, hot take, I don't even think he's going to be rookie of the year. I'm going to just be completely honest. And, and and the reason I say that is because I think Popovich, I think San Antonio is a perfect place for them. And I think Popovich is more into actually developing players and teaching them how to play within a That's system a hot take. than you just going out and just hooping and doing whatever. Um, and obviously Spurs have a system and they know how to develop players and they know how to see the improvement of players. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't be surprised if Victor first year is kind of on a leash and like, let's get you looking long term. Like, let's yeah. let's get you to really do something for this organization long term instead of you just letting you let the hype get to you and you just come in and be a so-called bucket. Um, And they got some young studs on their team. Like, yeah, like Kel- Keldon, Keldon Johnson is nothing to like play with, bro. Like, yeah, he's tough. And that's, a, that's, a potential all, that's a potential all star. Um. Mm-hmm. So like if they just think that Victor's gonna, I don't think he's gonna come in and get give him the keys immediately. Like, yeah, Bron. I think long term. I think long term, yes. But yeah, we'll see though. What about you, Ty? You think you think he lives up to the hype? I I'm gonna give y'all an example of how I think about it. Remember when Luca was coming out in 18, and we we knew who he was, but like. We we didn't like watch them. Nobody was watching them how we watching them now. Like they got Victor's games on NBA TV. Go ahead, my fault. No, 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 I was saying like I ain't gonna lie. Like I know on everything. Like I was watching Luca, but like I get what your point though. A lot of people. Okay, watching. like people weren't watching them like how they watch it. Yeah, no, no, not like Victor. So that's crazy. Because they got his games on NBA games TV. On, about Victor, they, exactly. They got his games on NBA TV. So we look at Luca, and we can all agree Luca's top five in the league. Averaging thirty, and he'll probably have a couple seasons where he averages triple yeah. double. So if he getting, if Luca not getting that hype that Wimby was getting, and he playing how he is now, how good do we think Wimby got to play? They must think that man gonna be. That, just, that's my point, and I'm not saying he's not gonna live up to the hype. He, we don't, we don't really know because he stuff could happen. You know, this, that, and the third. But like, yeah. It's going to be hard because, like I said, I brought up the Luka thing. Luka is a top five, top three player in the, in the league, and he's it's going to be hard. And, and Luka wasn't even the number one pick. <laughs> so And just, too, so, also, I think, too, like, to your point, Ty, like, this is a guard-driven league. Exactly. You know, um, you know, there's not a lot of Jokic's walking around. Mm-hmm. It's not a lot of Embiid's walking around. Like, they, it's just not a lot. Um, oh, man. So it's like. And going back to Will's point too, you know they got Keldon Johnson. They got a lot of young guys over there. Um, the ball hit dude or the color, he be having the colorful hair that be always subtweeting Braun. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, it's so it's something. So it's something. Uh, yeah, it's so he's funny though. I ain't gonna lie. But they got a, like they got a lot of pieces over there. And I mean, yeah, the hype. If if you're essentially saying, yeah, this man's gonna have an MJ like career, then no, I don't think he's living up to the hype. But I do think he's going to be a great player. It's just, it's just going to be interesting to me to see kind of how like this, like kind of because it's a guard driven league. Like mm-hmm. is, I'm just intrigued to see how his game fits because he's not a really good playmaker. Um, he's just seven five, can handle the rock, can shoot, and I mean, I don't even want to, I don't know, like if I, I don't even say athletic. I mean, you're seven five, so like you don't even got to really be athletic for real, like, but. I mean, I mean, but yeah, I understand he could be like, I don't know, like who would you model his game after the most? I mean, that's what I'm trying to think about. It's probably, probably KD on crack, RIP. <laughs> it probably, like, it probably does have to be like, KD like a, he's a, a taller KD. I was about to say KD, or probably. I mean, I say. Defensively, I say Manu Bowl because they both tall. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, but like, like offensively, offensively like a taller KD, bro. Yeah, you have to, bro. Have to. I think KD shoots way better though, like way better. At, but I, but I think Victor's Obviously. gonna develop. 
Sorry, see, don't drag it. Don't drag it. <laughs> you see? But it's I don't know why people are saying this, to be honest, because, bro, let's be real. For the next four years, the Suns aren't even, I mean, the Spurs aren't even going to be close to being contenders. Let's be real about their team. Well, not yeah. contenders. I think they'll they'll get a, a playoff. They'll be fine for a playoff spot for sure. They just got to get more players. Like they can get somebody in free agency. They they ain't paying nobody crazy. Like I think they yeah. most expensive player is Kelton Johnson. He, I want to say he around nineteen. Man, too. So. Like they got pop. So right. I think I really, right. I think it's I think his career is really. I'm glad you compared it, Bron, because I think the big first half of it is gonna pan out just like that. I don't think he will get a ring with the Spurs, and I think he'll end up leaving. At some point, man, have yeah, to go to super team. Do it. He he can. I'm not saying Dejounte Murray gonna get no ring, but he can do what Dejounte Murray did. You know, he developed in San Antonio because every year, if you look at Dejounte Murray stats, it's he was going every up. single year. Yeah, so all, it could be it could be like caliber. that. You, and exactly. And two, I mean, like he's he's with the Spurs, so you know you got you know Tim Duncan's gonna mentor him. You know, what I mean, you got. But then again, him and Tim Duncan's game so different. Like he's just an anomaly. Like. You don't yeah, see people bro. like him yeah. just walking around like seven five a guard like a guard. That's literally two K. Yeah, that's literally that's hard, 2K. That's hard, like two K. Like Victor literally those bills in two K that I be looking at. Like man, I don't want to play this game no more. Okay. Like the maxed out that's bill the one, that that's the literally you pulling from YouTube Bali. Literally that's, on, that's YouTube, you on YouTube, they got max badges pulling from yeah. forty limitless range oh, on Hall of Fame, Everything. posterizer Everything. Hall of Fame. Chase down block Hall of Fame. I'm like, how y'all get all these badges? Like, I'm gonna be like, I'm gonna have to hit a Ronnie to K all it. But that's who I think of. Like, he is. He's gonna but, get Rudy 40. Mike Terrence. Who? Man. Oh, yeah. He's gonna way. get Rudy Gobert 40. <laughs> they said, you see that video he was cooking him overseas when he was like 16? The boy was 16. Yeah. Right? Yeah, he was Rudy. giving Rudy the business. I said, oh, no. Tripping. Once I seen that video, and this was prime Rudy, too. This is deepest yeah. player of the year, Rudy. I said, oh, yeah, no, nah, he going to be a problem. He'll be in the league in about three, four years. He, yeah. he was giving Rudy the business. But let's kind of move on to the, um, you know, these next couple picks. So this number two pick, if Victor wasn't in this draft, I mean, I personally think Scoot would have went number one. Um, I think Scoot's the next best player in this draft. Um, mm. So, but here's a, there's a, there's a bit of a dicey situation going on in Charlotte. Because I, I've seen they've been having Scoot and Brandon Miller work out like multiple times because they were just torn about who to go with. Um, me and Tyler kind of talked about this, you know, off camera a little bit. But I'm going to start with you, Will. Who do you think the Charlotte Hornets should go with? Brandon Miller or Scoot? I think they should go with Brandon Miller. Um, and I'm going to actually disagree with y'all. I think... If Victor was in his drafts, I think Brandon Miller should go number one. I I, I like Scoot. Uh, I think he's really good. But me personally, after what I've seen, not only just in the tournament, just throughout the year, um, watching Alabama, I, I, I'm sold on bro. Like 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 he's the true um, three level scorer, athletic. Uh, aggressive obviously like in terms of an nba ready body he doesn't have that but he plays physical he plays physical um and yeah he's six nine like that's 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 kind of crazy um i think i don't think scoot for charlotte i don't know i think he would be a decent decent compliment um to Lamelo probably at like that two spot. Uh, what he'd be like the two, right? Probably. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, probably at the two spot. Um, but I, obviously with like the absence of Miles Bridges, they're in need of another uh small forward. And so forty seven nights he coming back. Forty seven nights. No, nah, he's gone. He's a he's a goner. <laughs> he's a goner. <laughs> I think he was on Facetime with MJ the other day. I said he gonna come back. He gonna be back. And they so probably told him, yeah, I'm not selling his team. That's yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think me personally, I would get I would get Brandon Miller. Um, but I'm also not in the workouts, and reports been coming out saying that they worked out together and Scoot was better than him by like a mile. Like he was they say he was way better than Brandon. So I don't know. I don't know what how he's performing in workouts. I don't know what they're seeing from the regular season. Um, and maybe I just didn't watch enough games as Scoot, but 
I did watch, and he's an exciting player with an NBA ready uh, frame. Um, can kind of do a little bit of everything, but I go with Brandon. Um, I I'm not mad at that because Brandon is, you know, he is different, especially dealing with everything that he dealt with. You can tell this man got tough skin, and you know he's just a buck. Um, he got a chip, but, <laughs> but me personally, you know, Scoot's different. Um, Scoot, I mean, he has an NBA body. He's athletic, um, and he's fearless. You know just as much as Brandon Miller is. Um, I think he's a little more fearless. I think he has a little more dog in him um, just because of how he plays on the court, not thinking of Brandon Miller's off the court stuff, just like in terms of just how he plays on the court. Um, to your point, do I think Scoot fits better on Charlotte? Probably not. I think Brandon Miller probably complements LaMelo better. But um, I talked to Tyler about this. Just reminded me of a couple years ago. Speaking of LaMelo, when, you know, the Warriors had a chance to pair Steph, Clay with LaMelo or James Wiseman. And, you know, they went and got the piece that fit their team the most, which was at the time James Wiseman. But me, you know, I just think because I think Scoot's the better player. I just think you just get the better player. Um, I mean, you put him at the two, you pair up two really good guards um, with LaMelo's playmaking, with Scoot's scoring ability. I mean, I think they would make a nasty backcourt. Um, would Brandon Miller make a good piece too? Yeah, he would make a great piece. But I just think just Scoot's tenacity, um, and he gave Victor bucks when they played. I mean, he he was not afraid. And just the way he talks he to the media, yeah. how he's telling everyone, look, I'm number one. Like, that's, that's a dog. That's the type of person you want on your team. So me personally, I think Scoot should go number two. Would I be mad if Brandon Miller went to? No. I mean, he's tough. I mean, he's 6'9". Like you said, a three-level score. This man is different. But I just think Scoot and LaMelo in the same backcourt would be pretty scary. We go, Ty. Uh, like I told you off camera, I got to take I gotta take Brandon Miller. Like, he was he, – he plays like Brandon Ingram, in my opinion. He's, he was better than Brandon Ingram than Brandon Ingram was at Duke, to be completely honest. Like, like Will brought up, like, he can put the ball in the basket. He's the best scorer in the draft. Uh, he was dealing with it. He, I don't want to say he backpacked Bama, but Bama shouldn't have been that good. With like, he can come in if he goes to Charlotte. He's definitely gonna have a better a rookie year than Scoot if Scoot was in Charlotte, in my opinion. Like he got, he can come in yeah. and average. He can come in and average twenty on decent efficiency for a rookie because you know everybody know rookies don't shoot too good their first year. So I think I think you take Brandon Miller for the fit. Like you said, obviously I feel like Scoot. Is the better player, but like he just I watch his highlights. He's a he's a dog for sure, but half his highlights is just punching on people. Like <laughs> it's literally just dunking. Brandon Miller yeah. got a bag. Like I and Scoot is the is honestly you could put him I I'll put him at the third best player behind Brandon Miller, but like Love Scoot is a dog, like you said. Scoot is a he's a he's a problem. I'm still yeah. Brandon Miller just his game three level score, he putting the ball in the back. It's hard to he pass when it's six nine but his defensive potential is ridiculous. Like yeah, he could really be one of the best if he really does deep and play defense, he could be one of the best defenders in, in a few years. So hundred percent. Like I said I think I think they take Brandon Miller just off scoring and the Hornets need another score. You don't need a, another dude who's just running and punching the whole time. Like you said, they got they I don't know if they bring it back I Miles mean, Bridges, but I don't know. I'm I'm taking Brandon Miller. That's just me though. Yeah. Might I mean that might help Portland's Portland's case. Cause I've been seeing reports that they want Scoot. Yeah. So they, I mean, yeah, I've seen that. they've been and saying that they, they want Scoot. So I mean you want Dame I'm to just, stay. Because they're saying I was saying that Dame was like Essentially, like Dame didn't say. Cause honestly, I don't know what these report. I don't know who be telling the truth no more. I be found they be cap. I don't know what's right or wrong. Like, and they be coming from credible journalists. Like, I don't know where they began this stuff from. Um, but I mean, they're essentially saying that Dame was essentially saying like, you either trade the third pick to get me like a co-star or like, I, I mean, essentially that was that. Like, I think because they're saying that Dame doesn't want to play with young players, he doesn't want to de develop players, which I get. But like. I mean, for Dame, man, I, like, man, you one of my favorite players, man. You a dog, like, but it's like, are you gonna be developing the next couple of years respectfully? I mean, they clearly. Why, why Scoot as a as a comp? Like, is Scoot not another like Shaden Sharp 
type comparison. To Essentially, me. but I think he kind of it's just I mean, you just pair him with another athletic guard in the back in the backcourt. I mean, Shaden Sharp is tough too, don't get me wrong, but Shaden Sharp plays more. How tall is he? Six five, six, six. Yeah. Yeah, it's, oh, it reminds me. I think I think Scoot. I Scoot, Scoot is better than Shaden, though. Yeah, Scoot is a Scoot. Is, Scoot has more three level score capability. Yeah, but I'm shoot. saying in terms of like coming right in, like you already got Anthony, obviously at the two. Like yeah, right yeah. I, was, I was gonna say, are they gonna bring Scoot up? Well, they said they want to the They yeah. want to Scoot. So I, I, don't I don't know. I don't know what Portland. Portland, 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 Portland don't know what they want. Portland don't Dane, know what they want. Dane don't know what he want. It ain't Portland. It's Dane. <laughs> he not, leave, he not Dane leaving, should have been. Listen, to, I don't know if Dane ever going to see this, but, bro, you should have been going from Portland about three, four years ago. You gave leaving, them bro. three contracts. After I ain't the second lie. contract. Him in Miami would have been crazy. He should have Him somewhere else would be crazy. Just yeah. I'm get, I'm tired of him being in Portland, and I don't feel sorry no more. I feel sorry the first, like, when they yeah. first reported yeah. him. Don't care. I mean, maybe Dane. maybe he like maybe he liked Portland. Maybe he liked the he weather there. I don't know, man. I mean, he uh, like the cold. I, I don't know. It, it seemed like he liked Portland more than like it winning. So yeah. he need to he need mean, to figure it out. He should have been Miami. Like, wouldn't be a bad bag. change. He like that bag. That so bag. he would have got the bag somewhere else too. Yeah. He would be paid regardless. I understand signing the first supermax. I get your bread. That's fifty million dollars. Yeah, but bro, you should have been gone. And I hope you see this too. I I mess with you, but you we'll gotta you we'll you gotta make up your mind, brother. You gotta make up your mind. <laughs> but um. And we got like two 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 topics left. These are kind of like some little, you know, how we do those like best, worst, start, bench, cut. So first we're gonna start with like a worst list. <laughs> and this was interesting to me because I was really looking back at some of these like l- like the things on this list. I'm by the name. And I was like, man, this was disgusting. But obviously it's draft night tomorrow. So basically, like, I'm gonna ask y'all, like, what would you say? was the worst draft class in the last 10 years. Me personally, I'm going to start and go ahead and say 2013. I'm pretty sure that's when Anthony Bennett was drafted. I'm sure it was Victor was in that doo-doo, top five. Doo-doo, 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 doo-doo. I think Cody Zello was in that top five. And all the quarter. <laughs> so, I mean, it seems that like you all are in agreement that that was Can the I worst draft one? class. I don't even know who else was in that I, get, that, I, yeah. bro, Kay, I know we got KCP in 2013. Unacceptable. Cause hold up, hold who up. else was it? Alex was, Lynn was the fifth pick for the Suns. <laughs> don't ever say his name ever again. Don't ever say his name. From 2013 to 2018, they missed year after. That's why I was thinking, yeah. that's my answer. I, forget the, the one of the last 10 years. Them five drafts had to be the worst a team has ever done. And they all was top five picks. Yeah. That's ridiculous. But yeah. to y'all point with the 2013, man, I remember watching it. Hey, they said man. with the first pick, Anthony Bennett, somebody I said, ain't even whoa! Know, I didn't even know who, who he was. He said, somebody I said, who is that? They thought he was the next run. They thought I he said, who, run. bro, I didn't even know who that. I said, damn, I must not have been watching college basketball like that. I said, they must have got no. a hidden gem. <laughs> No, there's no such thing as hitting Jones the first pick. That, that, that should not. You should be having the clear cut number one player. Damn, but he was a dog. Where, he was. Where is he Trey was Burke at right UNLV. now? Oh, probably overseas. Trey he was Burke nice was, in college, though. He was. Yeah, Trey Burke. Was Trey, Burke was, Trey Burke was like. Trey Burke was like, like that. Trey Burke I ain't like even that. mad they dropped to him, bro. He was tough in college. Uh, but ain't he let Michigan to a title, ain't it? Yeah. Yeah. No, not. They didn't win a title. I think they lost to Louisville. Oh yeah, 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 did yeah. They? Or did they? That's yeah, because uh, Peyton Silver was cooking them. Peyton Silver was pissing drafted Peyton Silver too. Crazy. We don't know where that man. Peyton yeah, Silver was. was crazy, bro. Yeah, twenty thirteen. Two picks. Two on. picks later, we could have got CJ tripping, but we got KCP. Now he got two rings without us. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Sick man. Sick. Absolutely ridiculous. Damn. Um. And so, like our last one, because I so we all agree 2013 was the worst draft class. Oh, big yeah. by far. Be, by far. Um, our last talk, this is an interesting start bench cut. You know, I, I really had I was I didn't want to do the normal like top players, like I want to do something like just interesting. Like we really have you gotta like have you think be, be so great. and these players on this list aren't bad, you know, they're they're pretty solid and within their own regard. So we're gonna do a start bench cut. 
Kyle Kuzma, Kevin Porter Jr., or Colin Sexton? I'm going to start with you, Ty. Mm. Kyle Kuzma. I'm going Kuz. I'm starting Kuz. Starting KPJ. I don't want to... I gotta cut Colin Six. I got two. Cause oh, that's tough. That's tough. Them last two is hard. I'm definitely starting Kuz, <laughs> but them last two is hard. This is definitely the hardest start to cut. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to cut Colin Six. I'm gonna have to. Yeah. What about you, Will? What's the three again? Colin Sexton, Kyle Kuzma, Kevin Porter Jr. Colin Sexton, Kyle Kuzma, Kevin Porter Jr. Mm. I'm gonna have to start. <sighs> Rookie year Kuz was crazy. I'm going to start KPJ. Uh, I'm a... Can I do that? Oh, gosh. Wow. I'm going to start KPJ. Bench. Kuz. Cut Colin Sexton. Oh, that hurts. I know I couldn't. I know I couldn't cut KPJ. I couldn't. Oh, yeah. Okay. I'm a... Dang. All right. Shout out Hoop Diamonds. I'm going to start. All right. That's tough, too. All right. I'm going to start KPJ, mm. Bench Coos, cut Colin Sexton. But I'm. Uh, that's tough, though. That's I don't like tough. It. I don't like it. <laughs> it's tough because, like, Colin Sexton, like, I'm over here cutting him like it's easy. It's really not. Like, it's really he really not, goes crazy on the cab. It's just. Dog. It's just Kuzma Loki became like he really stepped into his role last year. So I gotta I, Kuzma can't really get cut. And KBJ, he just on the on the Rockets. How much did Kuzma <laughs> average last year though? My voice cracked. He Loki be averaging like I think he has like 20. 20. 18 to 20. I would say definitely 20. Yeah, maybe. 18 to 20. But, but, I, but I mean Colin was averaging 22. He was like, yeah. Before he before he got hurt. Yeah, before he got hurt. Oh yeah, oh, so, true, true. True. Who's, who's average? Who's average? Twenty-one point two. Oh yeah, yeah. That's tough. Let me see I'm starting KPJ for sure though. KPJ, I remember he the, just on the I Rockets, remember, bro, the and game, they play whoever offense. Colin yeah, Sexton. I've seen him was killing. He had fifty on Drew Holiday head. He's just a hothead. That's his. He's just a hothead. That's really all yeah. it is. Like if he, he can said, control it, Drew twenty twenty though, average twenty-four point three. You said who? Bro, he was. He was tough though. I ain't gonna 20, lie. But like 20, Kuzma 20, really 20, 21, he averaged 24. But Kuzma and Colin Sexton really the same player for real. It's just Kuzma bigger. Go out there, go out there and just score. They really the same <laughs> player. Do nothing else. Like, they the same player. It's just because Colin, Colin Sexton, Sexton is defense, the buck. Colin Sexton do play defense better. Be I remember hey, he yeah, was cooking. Uh, who was he killing? Oh, I think it was Kyrie. If you were, if, he was giving Kyrie the business whenever yeah, he, he was somebody he was rookie. Not, when he was on the Cavs. If you, if you asked me this question three years ago, I would bet I would cut Kyle Kuzma with no hesitation. Um, <laughs> but it's just Kuzma really was hooping last year. I real, wouldn't like I wouldn't, bro. Kuz was getting nah. Was getting, I'm cutting him for Colin Sexton. Kuz, you gotta think about I'm it, though, bro. In that time, Kuz was getting Tatum comparisons. Like, I I don't care if he got after rookie year. I don't care if he got KD comparisons. Colin Sexton was crazy. He was yeah, crazy. He was eating. KPJ, that's, though, that's he different. Hard. KPJ just a hothead. That's really the biggest thing for him. He just a hothead. But yeah, man, that that's gonna that's gonna wrap it up for this episode. You know, this this was a good one. You know, we got got a lot of information out. Um, we got to cue the outro music. You know, we can't can't go without the outro music. <laughs> Losing my voice. Losing my voice. I hope y'all enjoyed this episode. And again. Again, if y'all mess with us, man, y'all showing us so much love on IG, but y'all not transferring that to YouTube. So you know, just subscribe, hit a subscribe. If you don't subscribe, I'm just gonna assume, I'm just gonna assume you don't like sports. If you don't like sports, just say that. But hit it with a don't little subscribe. Don't watch then. Don't even watch it then. No, okay, no, don't listen to him. Don't listen. Yeah, to him. no, just we still, still watch. You. Don't watch that bit. Still watch that bit. I mean, sometimes I know y'all busy. Sometimes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> still watch that bit. We appreciate y'all. We we need every little view we get. Don't so watch it. It's crazy. <laughs> and if somebody want to order me a pair of contacts, hey, then maybe I don't have to wear glasses no more. Y'all do that too. I don't wear mine. We hey, appreciate y'all, y'all though, man. We just we just playing with y'all. We do appreciate y'all, man. I mean, you know. It's been growing for a little bit. 
And yeah, we appreciate it. Without y'all, we don't got this for real. But I'm your host, Josh Raphael. My co-host, Tyler Pouncey, Will Young. We out. <laughs>